Silhouette Studio is essentially a design program that communicates with their cutting machines. Now, we're going to be using this program today in the basic edition, so the free version that you don't have to pay for, but you can also upgrade to business edition, which is a once-off purchase and you have it pretty much for the rest of for the rest of time if you want to make this process a little bit quicker. Now this is of course just my method of creating STL files or stereo lithography files for my 3D printer to be able to print cookie cutters. Now there are probably many other easier ways of doing this but this is my way and I'm going to be showing you how to do it. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So in Silhouette Studio we're going to start off with just a plain box. Like I said I'm going to be using basic edition with this, so I'm going to be showing you exactly how I create everything. This is obviously just a standard box, we're going to double click to open the point editing, and this is where we start to really edit our design. So I'm going to pull these points up at the top, because I want to create a little bit of a rainbow type design, and I'm going to click online to insert a few more points at the bottom. From here I'm going to click make curve, and what this essentially does is it opens up these two points here which allows me to change the angle of the, the line. So I'm going to change that into a corner as I want to be able to move them independently of each from, from each other and I'm going to shorten some of those there, make that a corner as well and we start manipulating the actual design that we're going to have here. Now of course if you have business edition you can make this go a lot quicker by simply Kind of starting off with something like this but like i said i want to make this a little bit more of a more accessible tutorial i'm going to be manipulating the points into a an arc which is almost there so now that we have our arc this is essentially where the designing can end and you can essentially just carry on with the next steps but if you wanted to add in another element Let's say we wanted to have not only a cookie cutter that cuts out the arc, but we also wanted to have a part that indents some lines on the arc. We can create that as well. I'm going to do that in this case. So I'm actually going to duplicate this one and I'm going to largely use the new one to make those little lines that get indented. So we're just going to shorten some of these sections here and bring those up and again like I said just a constant manipulation of the lines in order to get the exact design that we want and because these are going to be earrings they don't have to be perfect it's almost a little bit nicer if they're a little bit not perfect and now that we have that one we can actually duplicate it make it a little bit smaller and have it as the second arc so what, what I'll do with this design now is I will duplicate this outside arc, move it off to the side and we will play with that in a moment. And then I need to take the outside arc and go to the offset feature and create an external offset. And we click on offset as it's gonna be on the outside. And I'm going to move this a little bit narrower so that the line is very small or you can click the little arrows at the bottom. I'm also going to be clicking the sharp corners as I wanted to have a nice sharp corner. It just makes it a little bit easier for the 3D printing process and I'm going to click apply. So what I'm going to do now, because I want to make sure that all of these are overlapping each other and get printed out in one solid piece, I'm actually going to overlap them a tiny little bit. So what I do now is I highlight everything, I right click, make it a compound path, and then I fill it in with a color on the top left hand side. You will now notice if we zoom in very, very tightly that there are now white bits on the areas where they're overlapping. What I like to do here is I double click to open point editing again, and I remove the sections that create that white blip, and now we don't have a white blip anymore. So we're gonna do the same for all of the little corners. And once we zoom out again, we have the, one of the layers of our, our indentation, essentially, what that's going to be. From here, I move that design out of the way and bring in our original arc. Now, we're going to do the same again with the offset. So I'm going to go back to the offset feature and create an external offset there. This one is going to be quite large as it's going to serve as the base of our cookie cutter. So the part that we actually press into. I'm going to apply there and I'm going to duplicate that arc one more time before making this one a compound path. And we fill that in again with black so that we can see what we're working with. 
So now we're going to be working on the third layer. And again, we go to the offset feature, but now we make the offset again much smaller. So we bring it all the way down and we click apply. Again, we highlight everything, make it a compound path, and we fill it again in with black. So now we have three elements that we're working with. So this bottom part is essentially the part that's going to cut the cookie completely. Then the second part is the one that is going to put the indent on top. So if you see it like that, it will then just indent that on top there. Then the third part is going to serve as a little bit of a base for the cookie that we can actually press on. So it needs to be a little bit wider that we can work with it. If you're wanting to make the three layered design like we're going to be working with today, then you'll need to save each element individually. So what I do in this case is I will take the top two, delete those, and then I will save this part of the design. Now with business edition, which I've just switched to, we can go file, save as, I like to save it to my hard drive because I'm actually going to be using it. I'm then going to save it as rainbow indent as I like to know exactly which part of the design I'm saving. So I'll first save it as a studio file, then I'll save again, and then I'll save it as an SVG. And you can do that once again and save it as a PNG. So I like to save it as all three because I want to show you how to use all three in different ways. So let's go OK, transparent background, we can save. Then we undo. Now I'm going to delete the top and the bottom ones. And I'm going to save this one as the thin line. And repeat the process for this part as well as the outer, outer edge. So rainbow thin. And then the last one will be rainbow thick. And then just to make sure that I have at least one file saved with all three of them, I saved one of them as all three, just as a studio file. Now the next part of this tutorial involves us creating the actual design in Tinkercad. So Tinkercad is essentially an online platform that you can use to convert things into STLs. There's not a huge learning curve with Tinkercad, and I know that there are other programs out there that you can use, like Salva 3D, but I don't use those for this purpose, so I'm just gonna show you in Tinkercad. So within the Tinkercad homepage, I go to Create New Design. It'll then open up your work plane, and this is where you can start to import your files. And the reason why we've separated them out into three separate files is because when you import them all together, you can't pull them apart. And if you can, then I'm not sure how. So I do it this way. So we go to choose a file and we go to the rainbow and then we start inserting them one by one. So now that we have all three of them, we're gonna start playing with the height. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So now you can see they've been converted into 3D files and we're going to start working with them individually. So this one is going to be the smallest one as it's just the very edge base of the cookie cutter itself. So I'm actually going to change the height. If you, you know, manipulate the screen a little bit, you can see the little boxes. This one will change the height of the actual file. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to about two millimeters. Then this one will be the indent that we're going to create. So I'm going to bring this one down uh, quite a bit as well. So I'm gonna bring it down to maybe five millimeters. And then the third one, that is going to be obviously the depth of the cookie cutter. So Okay, and here is where you need to think about what you're gonna be using your cookie cutter for and how thick the item is that you're going to be cutting into. If you're gonna be cutting into polymer clay and the polymer clay is only going to be about two millimeters high, you can't have the top length 10 millimeters and then have the indent sitting at six millimeters because that means that it would your actual clay would need to be a minimum of five millimeters in depth in order for the indent to actually reach it. So in this case, because we're working with clay, I'm going to bring this down to about eight millimeters because I don't need it popping out all that high. And the indent we can leave at about six millimeters. So now it comes time to lining everything up. So if we select all three of them, we can actually use the align feature on this side. So if you press L to toggle it on, you can either align them to the bottom, to the one side or to the middle, and then again to the center. So they're all now perfectly aligned to the actual center of the object. And from there, we can click this button, control G, which essentially groups them or welds them together in, in, a, in a sense. So now we have one object and you can see it's now got two different layers 
and we will be able to have something with a little bit of an indent on whatever we en end up using this mold for. And from here, you can actually just export it as an STL. You can open that STL in Cura or whatever program you use to generate your G codes to print with, or you can send it off to somebody as an STL who will do the printing for you if that's what you need. And we see the cookie cutter that we have now created. Obviously it's slightly low poly because that's just unfortunately how that particular Tinkercad program works. So you're not gonna have completely smooth edges. And from here, you can then just slice it with whatever settings that you want to use. And you can check in the preview what it's going to look like once it has been printed. If you want to create a very basic cookie cutter, then you can use a website called CookieCAD. Now, essentially what this does is you will only need the outline of the item that you've created. So in Silhouette Studio, you won't need this one, you won't need that one, you'll only need this one. So if you don't have Business Edition, you can quite simply take a screenshot of it, use it that way, or you can open up the snipping tool, take a snip of your screen, and then save that and upload that to the program. So you can click here to upload the file. And like I said, you can literally just use the PNG, open that, and it'll do a lot of the work for you, which is great. So like we can see here, now we have a super basic cookie cutter design, and you can download that as an STL immediately. I mean, you don't have to do anything else, which is very cool. So we can log in, create an account, and then download the STL. It's quite quite literally as simple as that. And then we can open it. And again, it'll open automatically in Cura because that's what I use. And there we have our little cookie cutter. So it's a very, a little bit less fuss of a way of creating your own, you know, cookie cutter STLs using Silhouette Studio as your actual designing platform. But it is a great way of getting a super simple cookie cutter. If you're keen to learn more about Silhouette Studio, you can check out this playlist over here. Subscribe for more craft related videos in the future. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.